Welcome back guys, or if you're new here, this is Automotive Anonymous, and that's my 2022 Subaru Outback Wilderness. And today I'm going to show you how to change the air filters, both the engine and the cabin air filter. So if you're new to basic car maintenance, you might be asking, what are these filters and what are they for? Well, the engine air filter makes sure that small little dusty particles stay out of your engine because you don't want to be compressing those within the engine. And then the cabin air filter basically just means you'll have fresher air filtered through the vehicle. And again, less particles trying to get into the vehicle and causing your lungs some problems down the road. But thankfully, these are both super easy to change, especially on something like my Outback. And depending on your car and the owner's manual, they typically need to be changed every 10 to 15,000 miles, unless otherwise stated in the manual. Now, I'm not going to say I've never changed these in the 37,000 miles I've driven and owned my Outback, but I am going to say it's definitely time to change them. So where can you find them? Well, really any parts store or your local dealership for your make and model. Mine were about $20 each. The basic engine filter from O'Reilly's. It was a MicroGuard, which apparently is the only kind that they have in stock these days. And then the Outback air filter is actually the same as the Crosstrek. And I had an extra one of those from my Crosstrek days a couple years ago. So these filters are about $20 each, at least in my experience. And when you have them replaced at the dealership, the average cost is about $50 to $85 each. But why? It only takes a couple minutes to do each of them. So save yourself $100 combined and quite a bit of waiting around at the dealership time and just watch my video and if you're comfortable doing it the way I do it, change them yourself. I think saving about $100 in 20 minutes of work is not a bad deal. Anyways, let's get right into it, starting with the cabin air filter. And this is my cabin air filter and you can see back in the Crosstrek days, so it is back from 2019 when this one was made, but you can see basically just looks like a paper filter. It's very lightweight. It'd almost just flutter away if I let go of it in a slightly breezy day. But some vehicles actually have their cabin air filter in a difficult place to get to under the hood, usually in the back, kind of underneath the dashboard and in the very back of the firewall. But thankfully this one's pretty easy. It's just in the interior, in the glove box, but you do have to remove part of the glove box. So let's go through that process. First, make sure it's unlocked, open it up. I still have the factory sticker. I obviously don't use my glove box that much. And then just pull everything out. Once everything is out, you'll notice this little structural support on the side, just pop that off. And then from there, you just have to squeeze the pins that's on each side. So I'm gonna set the phone up so you guys can see that and I can put the phone down. Hopefully you guys can see that okay. And then it just kind of folds down and comes off with the uh, uh, just how that swivels and then can pop off. And then there's the box for the cabin air filter. And then from here, it's pretty easy to just pop up the little clips on the bottom. They do require just a little bit of a squeeze. And then the door pops right off. We'll put that in the glove box. And we're gonna pull out this filter, which needs to be changed, but thankfully it slides right out. You can see it does show which side should be up as indicated by the little up in the box right there. And this is what a very used filter looks like. You can also see that it has some pine needles, some leaves, and just a bunch of other debris as everything went up through the filter to be clean before it comes out through the vents such as that one. Sorry about these camera angles, guys. I know that they're not ideal, but then we can open up the nice new one. I would just be careful opening up the package because it seriously is pretty flimsy. There's not very good structure, like a backbone support on this, but then we're just gonna replace it the same way the up. You can read everything on it right there. Yeah, pretty easy way to save 50 bucks from the dealership. And then from here, it should go in pretty easily, just like how we took it out, kind of keeping it pressed against the roof of the little cubby right there. And you can see that there's kind of a little shelf for it, kind of like what your HVAC system in your house probably has if you have an air conditioning and furnace. But yeah, pretty simple. And then you just pop the tray back on. There's little tabs that kind of go in the top and then you can pop it into place at the bottom. Make sure everything snaps. Yep, and there we go. I just have to put the glove box back on the same way you took it off. So find the little bar for those little circular feet to go on. 
kind of snaps into place. And then once you get up here, you're gonna start to have some resistance. So you do have to kind of squeeze the sides. And then once those are in, just don't lose track of this because this can kind of go in there and then just connect it on. And voila, the glove box is back in place. And let me just say, I'm glad that this is in here. Look at all that gunk in the accordion folds. So either you could be breathing that in and that could be in your interior or it could be caught by the filter, which I'm thankful that it is. But this is just garbage. And then up next is the engine filter, which like I said, O'Reilly's where I really like to go personally. They only had MicroGuard products for whatever reason which are sometimes thought to be the cheaper ones, but it is what it is. I'm not overly worried about this outback, especially where I don't drive in like super dusty climates and, and off-road or anything like that. But you can see it's a little bit more structural than the other one with the rubber gasket lining, as you would expect because particles in your engine are worse than particles escaping through the cabin air filter. But let's see just how bad the factory one looks like in here. Thankfully, these are also pretty easy to replace on Subarus. Just pop open the box. And if you guys can see this, there's actually like a mesh liner in there to help protect you too. And that's just a permanent structure on that half of the air box because the air filters through the grill and wherever else it can be gathered into the box where the filters on this half, you can see the gasket liner is right there. And then it goes in the rest of the way before getting compressed by the turbo. So that's just a nice extra safety net from Subaru. And another reason why I don't really mind using a MicroGuard brand personally, although do what you're comfortable with. Otherwise, let's see if we can just pull this one out. Subaru Denso. Oh, and there is definitely, let's look right there. There's definitely a bunch of grit and stuff that that could ruin your engine if that or pebbles or anything else comes through. Things that are not compressible like air and fuel, which is all that you want to have in your engine. But otherwise, it honestly comes out pretty easily. I'm gonna set the camera down so I can do this better with both hands. And obviously you don't wanna get any more gunk in you know, the air box than you need to, and it's a good idea to vacuum it out. So I'll probably do that when I come home. But let's look at the difference between this old one and the new one. The new one obviously looks drastically better, but the old one definitely did its job. And you can see that they honestly look pretty identical in how they're set up. But again, this one is garbage. So we're just gonna throw that on the side and we're gonna put the new one in. And it should just drop in basically the same way. In fact, let me show you in here if you guys can see that. So I'm gonna go home, I'm gonna vacuum all this out. That's just an opening for air to come through that little tube right there. But there's definitely a lot of straw. Otherwise, this is gonna do a good job to keep all of that out. And in fact, I'll probably sweep some of that out before I put the new filter in right now. All right, and I got a lot of that stuff out, but it's worth vacuuming a little bit better later on. But really that mesh is pretty thick and I don't think anything's gonna get through there, especially after it has to go through the filter first to get through the secondary filter. But otherwise, this one will just drop right in its place and then just make sure that the box is sealed up how it should be, how it was before, and that the gasket lining all of the surface area of the box, as you should be able to see there. There's not really any gaps now. And then once we have to squeeze the box together and clamp it down, it's gonna be a nice tight seal. And holy cow, does that new clean filter look so much better than that disgusting thing. All right, there we go. It's only the two clips. If you wanted to actually take the front half of the box off, you'd have to actually screw some things out. But overall, it's that easy. And now both filters are replaced. Well, there you have it, guys. You saw that happen live. It didn't take any tools and probably about five minutes of actual work. Meanwhile, I only spent about $40 in total on those two filters and that same service if it was done at the dealership or just an independent shop that likely would have cost about $120 to $160 depending on the dealer. So in five to 10 minutes, someone you know who's not a mechanic, just someone who makes YouTube videos could change that in a few minutes and save $100. And I think in today's economy, 
doing basic maintenance items like that yourself are probably worth the time. It's probably worth the investment. Not only that, you know, the saving money and saving time that you otherwise would be spending driving to the dealership or the independent shop, sitting in the crowded lobby for, you know, 30 minutes or more, because I doubt they're gonna get your car immediately once you drive up to there. It's gonna save you not only that, but you're also gonna learn the skill of how to check under the hood, how to check and be more aware of where your engine and cabin air filter are. And you get a little bit of a skill out of it. If you do regular maintenance items, you know that this is a very simple task. In fact, this is probably about as easy as any maintenance item could be, which just means that Subaru and their engineers did a really good job when designing this platform and making it something that someone who's not a mechanic could easily do some of their basic items and save $100 to maybe be better spent on a more difficult repair. Anyways, guys, if this video is helpful in any way, please consider liking it. Subscribe if you haven't already. And of course, comment your thoughts and opinions below. Until the next one, I hope you take care. See ya.